Hey guys, it's Lolly, aka That Atheist Chick. Today I would like to talk about one of the most popular questions on my Facebook page, which is, Lolly, why can't you just let people believe what they want to believe? Why you always gotta be talking about it? I don't care what you believe. If you think that you came from a mushroom that grew out of a magical pile of poo in your backyard, more power to you. If you expect me to respect that mushroom because you think it created you, that's your problem. The reason that I have such an issue with the belief systems of contemporary Americans is not because I really care what they believe, but because their beliefs are based on delusions. And those delusions become the basis of their belief system, which then affects who they vote to put into office. We have seen a huge resurgence in turning back laws that benefit women. The fact that it's 2014 and we're even debating whether or not abortion should be legal in every state is disgusting. If men could have abortions, they would be available through a drive through clinic. You would be able to pop a pill and be good to go. But it isn't, so that's not how it works. The reason I feel the need to question things, not to attack them, but to question them, is because you need to question them. We can read for ourselves. Again, it's 2014. It's not the dark ages. I can go buy a copy of the Bible at the Dollar Tree. I can read it free online. I can get a copy of it at my library. Five, six, ten copies, different versions of it. Versions. How is it that I need to go to church or I need someone to tell me what to believe in? I can read it. I, I don't need to be preached to. I'm not in kindergarten. I don't need someone to read to me. Even in kindergarten, I could already read, so it's gone. Kind of... But you get my point. These beliefs, in turn, affect who you put into office. Sarah Palin actually was a candidate for vice presidency. She thought she could see Russia from her back porch, and she just gave a horribly misguided speech at an NRA association meeting which please do watch Jon Stewart's bit on that. He sums it up way better than I could. But essentially, all of the issues that they're discussing really have nothing to do with guns, except unless you think guns are the solution. And that's scary. Also scary, the fact that Inhofe, who is actually a representative from my state, I'm in Oklahoma, believes that the president is attacking traditional Judeo-Christian values and is promoting Islam. Delusional would be the only word I could think of for that. Anytime a Christian tells me that they're being oppressed, I really just want to throw punch them. You're not oppressed. Do you know who's oppressed? Immigrants. Immigrants are oppressed. Who else is oppressed? Prisoners of war. Having someone question your belief system is not oppression. And if your belief system is not strong enough to hold up under questioning, then that's your problem and not mine. The fact that your belief systems, your deluded, misguided belief systems, affect who you elect and put into office affects me. Because their delusional, misguided belief systems are used to make laws pertaining to my body. So yeah, it does offend me. It does bother me. It does matter to me. Whether or not you believe something, does that directly affect my well-being on a daily basis if you're sitting next door to me praying? No, but it is part of a greater picture. And it's not that I don't want you to believe. You can be spiritual all you want. I find that a very admirable quality in a person to look to something, to be a part of something greater than themselves. But to say that you are denomination A, B, or C, or sect A, B, or C, or religion A, B, or C, and that you and yours are the only ones with the right answer is self-righteous, self-important, and quite frankly, just hilarious. Like, what makes you so special? I have a big offense with prayer warriors, too, because, I mean, by definition, you actually aren't supposed to pray publicly. That's a pretty big deal. He doesn't like that. Um... And to think that someone sending happy mind bullets to an imaginary sky daddy is going to have a positive outcome on your situation is ridiculous. Prayer is like masturbation. It makes you feel good, but it does absolutely nothing for the person that you're thinking about. 
I get angry and I yell and I challenge and I push and I criticize because we are in the age of information. There is no reason to be willfully ignorant. I don't want you to abandon your spirituality. I do want you to start to think about how your religion and your belief system separates you from every other person in the world that's not just like you and how that's not part of a human experience at all. When you see someone that is your polar opposite, what you need to see in them is something that's complementary to you not something that's scary to you. And religion makes other things scary. <sighs> Ted Cruz's father, is Ted a, a, I don't know if he's a representative or a senator. Let me make sure I get my facts straight on this. Ted Cruz, Tea Party favorite Ted Cruz, Texas Senator. He's a senator out of Texas. Texas Senator Ted Cruz's father is an evangelical preacher, and he feels that, quote, if there is no God, we are ruled by our instincts. Of course, this leads us, when there are no moral absolutes, leads us to sexual immorality, leads us to sexual abuse, leads us to perversion, and of course, no hope. No hope. It's ironic that this is what he feels that um, we get without God, because um, moral absolutes, the Bible was not very solid on that. In a lot of situations, as far as moral absolutes go, we have the Ten Commandments, but we also have a number of things that have become huge moral issues in our sociopolitical system that were never even mentioned in the Bible. <clears throat> Abortion. Uh, um, homosexuality is mentioned allegedly once, depending on how you want to read that passage, though shellfish is mentioned seven times as being an abomination. The fact that it, it's just beyond amazing to me that he thinks that without um, Christianity, we would have sexual perversion and sexual abuse. I don't know if he's delusional or if he just has not seen any news coverage on the Catholic Church sex scandal in the last decade or any other news source where children are regularly sexually assaulted, molested, raped, abused, abducted, misused. <sighs> in houses of worship by high-standing people in that scenario. Not to mention Christian schools. There was a guy actually here in, um, in the Metro Tulsa area that worked at a Christian school that was raping the girls that work there, or that go to school there, I'm sorry, that was raping students. So tell me again how this Christian um, belief system is what makes you be a good person, because I've read the Bible, and it's not nice. And it approves of abuse, it approves of slavery and if he's approves of beating your wife you can stone her if she's not a virgin when you get married um what it doesn't ever mention is abortion not even once it does mention incest and according to the bible the world was populated twice over by incest that's disgusting that's your moral high ground that's like what you use as a measuring stick for the rest of the world incest Fabulous. This, guys, this is why I yell about it. This is why it makes me mad, and this is how it affects me. Just because something affects me doesn't have to mean that person is literally in my bubble damaging me. Other things that greatly affect me, bullying, world hunger, rape, uh, fear culture that is perpetuated in America, um... Lots of things. Animal welfare. I'm not a kitty, but I don't want to see animals abused. I don't get bullied, but I don't feel that it's right that anyone else should have to feel that way. I'm not discriminated against for being a white girl, but I don't. that doesn't mean that I don't think that racism is an issue. For you to say that it only matters if it directly affects you is hateful, cruel, and very un-Jesus-like. And that's the biggest issue I run into, is the people that are the first to jump me about my actions or my words or the way I approach things are the ones that act the least Jesus-like of everyone. They sit around and they judge and they don't do anything and they sit in their expensive cars and their expensive churches and feel self-righteous and important and special and chosen. All the while, just down the street in their own little town, there are people homeless, hungry, and sleeping in a park. So tell me, which one of us is really the jackass here? Guys, it's the National Day of Reason. And I hope you have a very, very logical day.